So I'm assuming that you're here right now because you're editing your GoPro footage or any 4K footage and it's really laggy on your computer. Like maybe the video keeps stuttering but the sound keeps going and you think it's your footage, you're not sure what it is, but in fact it is your computer, just can't handle that kind of graphics. But you know what, I'm here today to solve that problem for you. Get a new computer! <laughs> I'm just kidding, actually you could still use your old computer, but uh, there's a really cool trick that I'm gonna show you. Mr. Black. By the way, welcome to the channel. My name is Danny Black, and if you are new here, don't be a stranger, click that button right there, and I'll bring out videos all the time. Also, links to everything that I'm talking about, plus some more information can be found down in the description, and a surprise link. Surprise. All right, so we're gonna get right to how to fix that problem, but I really wanted to tell you about Motion Array first. If you are a video editor, Motion Array is where you can find some of the best plugins. And those plugins are how you get some really cool graphics for your videos. Like when I need to make an intro for something, I can easily browse through Motion Array. I search through their intros, their titles, or whatever. Like that July of intro I did, that was all for Motion Array, and I made that in like 20 minutes. And there are a lot to choose from, and they're also adding new ones all the time. And I get it, this sounds like an ad, because it kind of is, but this is exactly Exactly what I'd be telling any of my friends or family that are looking for cool effects for the videos. It's just, I highly recommend it, I love it, I use it all the time. If you click the link in the description or the pinned comment to let them know that I sent you, you can save $50 on an annual plan. But you can just click the link and check it out for yourself, browse through some of those effects. Um, well, don't do it now, you know, wait till the end of the video, but get back to it. So I don't usually put ads like that at the beginning of videos, but since I'm talking about video editing, I thought that you as a creator could massively benefit from hearing about Motion Array, so that's why I put that there. But let's just go ahead and get right to the content and no more ads, I promise. All right, so there's two ways to actually do this. Now, if you are using a program like Final Cut, actually a lot of video editing programs will have this feature, it's called proxy editing. So like with Final Cut Pro, we can highlight all of those 4K videos and we can turn on proxy files. And what that means is it creates a lower resolution file of that video. That way it can play smoothly on your computer and then later on when you export it, you can export it in the high resolution version. Or like when you import your footage, you can actually just have this one clicked and it will also create those proxy files for those videos. That way you have all of those proxy files on your timeline and you can edit them smoothly and then yeah, export it. And there are so many tutorials on each different video editing platforms out there that show you how to do that. And one more thing I wanna say is if you're looking for some good free editing software, I have a link as well for that down in the description. I just stumbled upon this pretty cool software and uh, you can do a lot with it and it's free. So let's just go ahead and focus on the GoPro itself. With a GoPro, they actually create low resolution video with your high resolution video right here on your SD card on the GoPro. And the reason they do that is because, you know, when you're going through your gallery and you want to preview something that you just filmed, there's a low resolution video playing. Otherwise, it would take a long time to load on your GoPro. And, you know, the screen's not that big, so you don't need to see 4 or 5K footage on this tiny screen. So we shoot something with the GoPro and we are going to either take the SD card out or just connect it directly to your computer. And when we connect it to the computer, we're gonna open up that folder and we're gonna find those video files. Files. So you'll see that there's mp4 files and that's your high resolution video files But also you're gonna see these LRV files and that's those low resolution video files And if you also notice there's these THM files and that's actually just the thumbnail So that when you're looking through your gallery on your GoPro That's just the thumbnail of the video clip that you've just created So what we're gonna do is go ahead and drag over those high resolution video files the mp4 ones and create a folder within your project that says high res videos and then we're gonna create another folder for the low res video files and we're gonna drag those over and drop them in as well. So it's important to keep them in different folders. It just makes it a lot easier later on. Now when it's all said and done and you have your timeline open, you want to actually get those LRV files over onto your timeline. And the tricky part about that is that they don't really work because they're not like proper video files. So what we have to do is just rename them. So we're gonna change it from LRV to MP4 and just say use mp4, that's fine. And guess what? Your timeline will actually now recognize that mp4 footage. So now we have those low resolution files on our timeline and we're gonna go through and we're just gonna edit the footage, get the whole project done. When you play it through, it's gonna be buttery smooth. It's just gonna look a little bit low resolution, but when you're editing it, that's just a lot easier to see everything smoothly. So go ahead and add your titles, add your motion array effects. And once you're all done, before you export it, we're gonna switch those low res files out for the high res files. 
And so how we're gonna do that is kind of an old school way. We're gonna go into that high resolution folder with all those files. And you know what, for your first time, make sure you have duplicate high resolution files just in case. So if you accidentally do it the wrong way and you delete those high resolution files, they're not gone forever. You can retry. So if you notice like for the Hero 10, it's going to say GX010075. And on the low resolution file, instead of GX, it's gonna say GL. So all you have to do is change the GXs to GLs and keep all the other information. So now we're gonna select all of those high resolution files. We're gonna drag them over into the low resolution folder and drop them. And then it's gonna come up and say, uh, do you wanna replace these? And we're gonna say, yes, we wanna replace the low resolution files. And once you've done that, it's gonna automatically update it on your timeline and it's gonna switch it to those high resolution video files. Any editing that you've done with your effects or anything with the audio, it's all going to stay the same. It's just going to have that high resolution quality. And so that's it. That's how you do it. It's quite simple. And actually a huge shout out to Martin on Instagram. He sent me a DM and told me this idea and I never really considered it before. I've known a lot of people that have this problem. So that's how you do it. And maybe nobody's still here because once they heard the proxy thing, they're like, oh yeah, that's a lot easier. And they didn't watch the rest of this video. But if you did, thanks so much for watching. I have a lot of products to review and a lot of fun videos to make. So stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Purple line.